playwright has a very interesting lecture here in its Python documentation, right? About the page object model, how we can implement it and how we can run our test using that particular page object. As you probably know, this is a design pattern that we have available. There are a lot of design patterns, of course, but this is the one that we have in the official documentation and I wanted to take a look of it. So you can understand how to implement it. Uh, we can discuss line by line what is going on here in the in the implementation example and i hope that you get the idea of how it works well with this video so thank you very much for clicking on this and let's go ahead and take a look of how this works i just wanted to tell you that the code that we're going to develop in this uh, particular example uh, as well as other examples that i have you can access them in the playwright python test framework github repository that i have for you here we have the requirements the installation process and all this stuff that you need to know about this uh, so I just wanted to tell you that. Also, I have created a LinkedIn website for Joang Media. If you want to follow it, I'll appreciate it because I can post, well, a lot of content related uh, about software development and quality assurance for you. So I hope that you can follow me. And also at the end, if you want to take a look of my channel, you're going to find a very interesting playlist, uh, playlist about Playwright Python tutorial. Here you can see how to install it, how to work with PyTest, uh, Codeless, UI tests, API tests, and so on. So I hope that you can come here and check all the, the content that I have for you about Playwright Python and, and, and well, I hope that you like it. All right, masters, let me explain you the example, what they are trying to explain to do with the class definition and then the test over here, all right? Okay, using Playwright and Python, what they want to do is, well, visit, bing.com which is a search engine right such as google but for from microsoft i guess <laughs> okay then the script using playwright is going to come here to the search input and type something it is going to be the search term okay so maybe i can look for playwright and then the play the the script is going to emulate the enter action that a user may want to do in his uh, keyboard so I'm going to press enter. All right. And that's it. That's the, the example that we have here in the official documentation. And I want to explain you how they are modeling those actions in a class. Okay. Let's start. The first um, line here is going to be a simple class, which is search page. Okay. That's the name of the class. And then we have three uh, functions here. The first one is going to be the init function. It is basically a function which will initialize and activate or activate the properties of the class for a specific object. In this particular uh, example, is going to be search page. Then it, it is going to receive a couple of parameters. The self parameters is um, it's a requirement. Basically, represents the object which will inherit those properties, all right? So self is a must in every single function, as you can see over here. Um, and then, for example, the init function is going to require a page parameter. Why it requires a page? It is basically to tell the object that we're going to be using the page instance of Playwright. Just bear with me. I'm going to explain you that when we are using the class. All right. Don't worry about it. Just wanted to tell you that. Also, you can see that the second line here is declaring a self that search term input. This is basically a variable that we're going to have in the object that represents the search term input that I was well showing you before this particular search input uh, element, right? Where we can type all right now that we have declared that kind of property, right? I just have to use the page.locator to find the element in the in the UI, in the website. They are using this particular selector, uh, enter your search term, just to find this particular uh, search input. All right, that's it. That's what, what's going on in the uh, init function. We're initializing, well, the page and also declaring a property name, search term input, okay? Now that we have this, we can create another function here, navigate, okay? And the navigate is going to be visiting the website bing.com, okay? That's the that's why they declared this navigate function. And then we have another function here, which is going to receive a text, the search term that we are going to type over here, all right? That's it. And you're going to notice that it has a couple of actions. The first one is going to be fill or type the search term in the input 
that we have declared before over here. Let me show you this. This is the variable that we created before, the property, the object property that we declare in the init function. All right. And then you can see that uh, I am just pressing enter after I type the search term in the UI. And that's it. I want to copy this example and I want to, exp uh, well, get it, get it working for you. Okay. I'm going to just copy this in my search pay page that py which is the class where i want to have this example okay that's it now in the next part of the video i want to implement this class in a test using the same documentation that we have here and let's take a look of how it works all right masters i guess that um, it is time to explain you how you can use the class into your test okay it is going to be pretty easy but and i just wanted to point out that you can use synchronous and asynchronous code it depends on how you want to handle it um it is a pre uh, th there is a a little difference when you're working with this because maybe when a synchronous code you need to use a sync IO, right? We have uh, checked that in the very first video. If you want to check it out, just go ahead and take a look. And But in my case, I'll be using uh, synchronous code, okay? That's why I, I was using this example over here. But at the end, it's pretty similar. You can see that here we have an asynchronous a function right then we have a wait in every single action and there could be some difference more when you're well coding more complex uh, examples but for now it's pretty similar right for this example is basically the same okay so i'm gonna uh, stay with synchronous code the class is going to be synchronous and the test implementation has to be synchronous as well okay so for doing this i'll be using the synchronous example that we uh, created before i'm going to copy and i'll be pasting this in our example all right it is important to mention that i just need to import synchronous a, a playwright from the playwright sync api okay and using this uh, import i can use the um, well this this particular function and we can name it as p okay now we're gonna be using the synchronous playwright api uh, and we're gonna alias it with a p right that's that's what's going on over here the first uh, the first part of this example is basically that we're gonna create a variable named browser and we're gonna be using the play the synchronous playwright api with the alias p and i want to launch a chromium okay a chromium a instance of a browser right and i want to launch it with the headless property false so i can see the ui that's that's it that's it basically okay and now that we have this i can perfectly come here to the official documentation and i can copy this okay let me show you this there it is and i can place it below the browser definition why because i needed to have an instance of the browser okay that's something important and, and that's why i wanted to make this example because if you're not totally aware of how the synchronous and the asynchronous implementation works maybe you need to come here and check or go well back in the documentation and see how it works i just wanted to well give you all the options okay um all right and let's analyze what is going on in this particular piece of code okay well the first part is going to be that the page is going to have a new page of the browser which is in this particular case going to be a chromium uh, instance okay then uh, i am going to be creating a new variable named search page and as you can see here guys the search page i need to import it all right so i'm going to copy this particular from and I'll be pasting it at the beginning of the uh, test. What is going on here? Basically, uh, from the models, it, this is not models, guys. I'm sorry. It has to be page objects, okay? And the name of my uh, class is going to be search page, if I'm not wrong. Let me just check my example here, but I guess I am correct. Search page, all right? From page objects which is my folder here and then search page which is the name of the file where it contains my class okay um i'm importing the search page class over here all right this particular class i'm gonna save this and you can see that importing this class uh, it is gonna require uh, the the parameter right page that's why i was requiring this when i i am 
initializing my instance of this object, okay? Now that I have the instance, I am assigning that instance to the search page variable, and then I can perfectly use the methods that we declared before, the navigate and the search method, <clears throat> okay? And you can see that I am navigating to bing.com and it is searching for the search term, search query. So it is going to receive this parameter. This particular function is going to receive this parameter and then it is going to fill with the text. Well, in this particular case, search query, right? And then it is going to press enter. That's beautiful, guys. And that's how it works. All right. Now that we have the full code here and maybe we can take a look of how it launches and, and how it works. I want to prove you that it is doing what, what we're programmed, right? What we have done before. And I want to use a screenshot, okay? Just to see a, the final result in a screenshot. And also I want to get the page title, okay? And I want to print it in my console log. Just, I'm just using a couple of concepts that we also saw at the beginning of this series about how to get the page title and also how to take in a screenshot, okay? So I'm just mixing the concepts that we already know, okay? That's beautiful. So now that I have here at the end, I'm just closing the browser just to clean the instances in my computer, all right? That's it. So how I run this and how it works? Well, perfectly. Uh, easy it's so easy guys um, it is just using the command python and then the name of the uh, file however i'm currently in the root directory of my framework so i need to come here to the pom folder so i can access the test instance so i need to go to cd pom and then i can use python okay and then the name of the test, which in this case is test search and that py. I can run this. Uh, it is going to open a new instance of a Chromium. It happened so fast, but you can see that, well, here we have uh, something interesting. Let me see. Do, 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 do. I do have an issue, maybe. Let me see what is going on. Mm. Do, do, do. Sir, line 10 in modules, search query doesn't work correctly let me see why mm, do, do, do. Tri mod recent call last i do have an issue here guys and it is interesting let me see what is going on i'm going to expand here the console and return task result here we have an issue with the fill function resolve to the two hmm let me, sh let me check the screenshot or I didn't get the screenshot. Okay, guys, let me see if I am doing something wrong in the class. Okay. Let me check. Hmm. I, I want to do something different here, guys, just to make sure that it is not the locator. I'm going to change the locator here in the... I want to specify the input by its ID, just to make sure that it works. And if it is not the case, I need to, well, take a look deeper, deeper on what is going on. Okay, I'm gonna run again the test. Let me see if it works. Okay, and now it works. Okay, guys, let me explain you the situation. Maybe this is why it wasn't working. As you can see, the, the selector from the um, example, okay, was using a, a area label and the area label is in English, of course, because that's how the documentation was made. However, my Bing is rendered in Spanish. You can see that my area label is escribe el termino de búsqueda, which is the same in English than enter your search term. <laughs> so I decided to change or replace the area label and the diff the locator to more specific the selector using the ID. A SB foreign Q. So as you can see in my new selector here, I'm just using the input element, the ID over here, and then the ID value, which is basically SB SB foreign Q. This is an ID that doesn't change. I have checked before, so maybe it's more reliable from my, well my perspective since my browser is rendering this in Spanish. All right, that's amazing. Okay, now you can see that uh, in the terminal. Here we have uh, the, the response in the console log, right? 
that is printing basically the title of the website. I can prove you that this particular title is the correct because if I look for this search query in Bing, okay, let me show you this. The title is search query over here. All right, that's beautiful. And then, um, well, I'm taking a screenshot as soon as we have, well, a search something and here is the, 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 the screenshot okay well the screenshot happens fast so probably um, that's why we don't have any result yet because we need to wait a little bit more but it is working and this is a proof of that okay guys so I hope that you get the idea of this video guys uh, um, I hope that you love it let me know in the comment section if you find it useful uh, from my perspective this is a, bit, a video that I wanted to see if if I, if I wasn't related with this, because as you can see, maybe I needed to know how to use synchronous code, how to use this particular line, the, the synchronous playwright API, how to use the, the alias. And that's something that we have this, uh, discussed before, right? But if you're a new guy in playwright and Python, this could be pretty useful for you. Of course, if you wanna run this in asynchronous, you can use the same repository that I'm giving for you. And here you have an example of how to run it. And uh, at the end, you just have to run the same uh, command, Python and the name of the test, but using the different structure that we have for asynchronous code. So guys, thank you very much. This was Young Media. I hope that you enjoy it and I hope to see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.